Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I was supposed to fly from Phoenix to Boise today, but Microsoft outage के वजह से that trip got cancelled. We went to the airport and then we were told that flights are getting cancelled and stuff. So we came back home. But yeah, I just wanted to share that update. All right, just to give a quick introduction, I'm a second year master student, computer science in the US. I go to Arizona State University and I'm in my seventh week of a ten week summer internship as a software engineer. So just wanted to throw some light on the internship, some insights and like what to take away from the internship. If you're still not subscribed to my channel, do consider subscribing. The last video. did really well because i was speaking facts and i'll try to keep things that way first i want to talk about the importance of a summer internship right so the first thing is if you get a summer internship it is one of the easiest ways to convert to an actual full time offer that is why summer internships are extremely extremely important and they are the best ways to get like a full time position after you graduate the first job but other than that even if the internship does not mature into a return offer due to reasons like sponsorship or budget issues or it wasn't just a fit with you and the team so even if it does not convert i think it's number one a good us ex- experience a lot of people would have experience in other countries but if is not if it's not a mnc then it is hard for employers to recognize where you have worked so i think this sort of gives a tag that okay this person has worked somewhere in the us that is one industry experience definitely and also the summer internship can extend to like a co-op and then you can have much more experience and number 3 is finances because a summer internship you might make as much as once offsetting one semester of tuition fees so and if you're doing co-op like if the summer internship extends to like fall and spring you can sometimes graduate with minimal debt which is huge because not everybody is into research and they might not get assistantships but internships if extended to like a co-op for one or two semesters then that's an excellent way of sort of offsetting your cost so those are the three main reasons why internships are crucial return offer industry exposure and finances now i'm not going to talk about getting an internship that is probably for another video but this video is about after you get the internship what do you do or at least what i sort of did what was my thought process there are three things that matter one is does the company sponsor h1bs or not so i think it's important to understand whether your organization sponsors visas like basically hires international talent full time or not because if they do not and if they are let's say there's a 0% chance they'll hire you then it's sort of a dead end you can always treat it as the experience and the finances but the first part is gone the return offer the expectation of a return offer is gone so you should just treat it as like get, gaining those experiences gaining those skill sets and the money but apart from that it's going to be a dead end but then there are cases where i think it's important to understand that in the first 2 3 4 weeks that whether there is a chance of sponsoring just because they haven't sponsored in the past does not mean they'll not sponsor a friend of mine recently is interning in a rather smaller company they haven't sponsored a lot and his full time was a little bit wonky but he talked to his manager and made sure that okay they are on board with sponsoring they don't sponsor at scale but if they find a fit then they would be open to so i think understanding that 0% or 10% or 100% is important when i say 100% i mean companies who are full fledged sponsoring h1bs and who are full fledged uh, let's say signing opts basically who are open to hiring international talent then you don't have to think about them that's all let's say you get an internship in amazon taking example of amazon as a big company then you have to care about one less thing right you don't have to care about the sponsorship element but if there's a slight possibility then i think you should make those conversations initially and you should try to keep that in head that this might not result whereas if it's a 0% you should also be comfortable with that like i'm saying make your peace with whatever the sponsorship situation is the second and the most important part is budget and this is not in your hand this is often not in the manager's hand this is from the leadership side so if there is no budget i recently did a podcast with shitij he interned in rivian for 8 months give his 100% absolute best his manager loved him but still they couldn't do it because the company was running short of funds they had budget constraints and all of those things which is also why so many layoffs happen it is not because of talent or skill it was just because budget cuts so their employees do not generally have any control over it and the third and the most important is performance how you perform in an internship which will sort of result in return offer or not speaking of performance i think it is important to identify what sort of company or what sort of culture they promote so for example i think bigger companies with sort of stable business care at least a lot about your behavioral skills your cultural or your so- cultural fit or your social skills how you interact with team members how many initiatives you take things like that i would say that big companies stable companies have like a 60 40 split 60 technical 40 i'm just throwing numbers here it could be 50 50 but i'm saying that 
the chunk of behavioral is matters a lot more amazon is probably an exception because i keep seeing on reddit that amazon is more about just the technical so it's like 90 10 probably but i think generally speaking bigger companies care a lot about social skills whereas if it's a smaller startup i think technicals matter much more because i mean if the company is not yet profitable not yet stable you you need hard workers you don't need nice people you need people who get shit done so i think it matters what stage the company is at right now and what is the overall culture i think this is also important to establish and just get a hang of understanding that from seniors or from alumni if somebody has done an internship previously or just with your manager understanding that culture and understanding what exactly are you looking for so i think having those conversations in the first two weeks is important so now let me take up my experience my journey and put it into perspective so my organization fortunately has no issues with sponsorships so they have sponsored in the past and they are open to sponsoring international talent that is covered i never had to think about it i never had to worry about it second is budget which we don't know right so whether this will materialize into a return offer fingers crossed or not that is not in my hand or even in my manager's hand because this goes up to the leadership and like vps and evps are involved the third is what exactly do they care about so i found out that my org cares more about like technical plus social and it's not just the technical i would say that socials matter almost as much or probably slightly more in my org but it will be different for different orgs right things like conversation how you present how you collaborate with other people visibility and all of these matter as much as my technical skills and i think that can be a blessing or a bane depending on your personality depending on your character i think some people have a lot of positive energy and that sort of comes off as like the vibe is good right soft skills are basically like what we call vibe right so if the vi- vibe checks are easier for them whereas if you are let's say very good in technical but it's just that you don't care about communication and you don't enjoy going out of your way to talk about the weather let's say so then it becomes tricky then you have to sort of go out of your way and do all of those things but i think eventually both of these matter if you want to climb up the ladder both of these will matter so the technical person will also have to learn behavioral and the if you're just behavioral and you can talk but you don't know anything about technicals then i think both matter but for me i think that was simpler because i think i've already worked for 3 years so things like uh calling bandwidth and all of those things are come come of naturally to me because i've interacted with a lot of product managers no hate and i think on the technicals what my learnings were and my experience was in data science and analytics and this is a software engineering internship this was new to me i'm a fresher as far as software engineering is concerned my only software engineering experience was when i was working part time on campus uh, at a lab in asu so that was my only that was the first time i wrote like an end to end application and it was a small dummy application it did not have like authentication and all of those things just like a basic modern stack application but i think during my internship i got more exposed and more accustomed to writing clean modular code which is readable because readability modularity all of these things are more important than how less complex or let's say how how much complexity you are solving right because when you're writing enterprise code your lead code brain should take a back seat so it is not about time complexity it is not about space complexity it is more about is this readable by someone else does it follow basic object oriented principles does it have proper doc strings like documentation does the code have proper naming convention or am i just writing a equal to and b equal to like variables like we do in lead code right things like solid principle so s in the solid stands for single responsibility principle which says that a class should do just one thing and nothing else so it's not confusing then things like error handling exception handling parameters accepting default having default parameters so that you have always like always thinking of those edge cases always thinking from like a user perspective and the edge cases i think for a software engineer these are all like i think everybody knows this by the third or fourth month but these all are new for me so i think this is more like i said i'm a fresher as far as software engineering is concerned but i think technical skills as in understanding network calls understanding how apis work fiddling with the browser console uh, so these are the things that I think every software engineer has to sort of do but if you're comfortable with it I think it gets easier and I think another important thing is version control basically git which I think everybody struggles with and I am also sort of struggling with it I still don't know how everything works what like rebase and merge like all of those things what is the difference between those two writing proper commits writing decent release notes which makes sense to you later and makes sense to everyone else later because writing code together with senior engineers is a different ball game so I think these are the things that matter when and i think at least performance is being judged whether 
you either are exposed to these things or at least you had intention to learn and there was a growth during the internship period so for my project without disclosing too much i have been working on a package which does a certain thing so i've been exposed to a lot of like object oriented stuff because i'm essentially writing a class on a higher level so basically now i'm setting up a service which uses webhooks to get a certain thing then uses the package to sort of do something and this will be in the deployment pipeline somewhere in in a docker container so the package involves python and selenium and the service requires python the backend framework is fast api containerizing through docker so this is what i've been exposed to this is what i'm learning on the side i think what i'm learning on the side is also version control there's a game git game which teaches you how to do basically everything commit merge all of those things and finally when i say performance i also mean quantifying that performance so i think it is important because at the end of the day you have to drive impact you have to drive the business so it is important to establish how you will be creating that impact setting that expectation straight so i think it's important to know the impact of the project what is it solving and at what scale it's solving is it saving time is it increasing revenue is it increasing the ease of process what exactly is it doing the supervisor or the manager whoever the leadership they will know but they need to know that you know so i think it is important for you to understand the impact probably if possible have it in a quantifiable manner so so that at the end of the internship when let's say you're discussing terms and let's say you're discussing your performance you can say that hey this was the impact of my project this is what we set out to achieve and this is what was achieved i saved the technical bit in the last so that there is something for everyone at least in the first half because the first half is still stable for anybody doing anything it's like more generic towards internship the last is my experience and since i am doing software engineering mine will be technical but i think that pretty much sums up my experience and my insights from the internship i have been very fortunate to have a summer internship internships rate i talk about this a lot it it was around 20 to 30% across multiple schools so it was very difficult to get an internship this summer converting that to full time is much easier that funnel is much broader in the sense that conversion ratio is generally much higher whether that happens for me is something that even i am waiting for but i'll share updates on the channel good or bad whatever happens and i'll see you in the next one